Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Will. And I'm Robbie. <laughs> I don't know which way to point because normally Ross just immediately is there and I don't have to point at anybody. Yeah, so. my screen's vertically oriented too. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like everyone's above you. <laughs> so this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Ross isn't here tonight. He had a, a family engagement that he couldn't get out of, um, which we completely understand. Um, but as always, we're socially distanced. Uh, I'm in the Midwest. The dog is headed out the door. Uh, William's in Virginia and Robbie's in Wisconsin. Did I, nail it? Did I get close? I knew, I knew Wisconsin, but You're good. Yeah, when, when you say D.C., I'm always like Maryland, maybe. Uh, yeah, previously Maryland, but now, now uh, Arlington, Virginia. And it's expensive everywhere, right? Quite. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's if you're going to be known for something, I'm not sure that's what you want to be known for, but yeah, it's very expensive. <laughs> exactly. That's why I assume uh, why Congress always gives themselves pay raises is they have to live in and around the D.C. area. So I just, mm-hmm. I always yeah. thought they were cost of living increases. The rest of us, who knows? <laughs> I think that's the most political we've ever gotten on the show and cut it at that <laughs> right. all it done. took was ross skipping out for one night and i side tra- right into mm-hmm. politics not right. even close <laughs> so we're gonna open with i'm i'm just going straight to the image to let you guys react to it as naturally as possible it's it was in the news towards the end of the week the four wheel news the guys oh. over at four wheel mag uh had four-wheeler had the 392 wrangler they were testing out in the desert this is the still <gasps> here's the oh video. my god and he just romps it oh oh my goodness <laughs> that's Good holman geez. behind the wheel that thing oh my I god i think it's holman <laughs> i we we need to get a hold of him to ask oh. him uh so yeah, flying into the weekend. Yeah, so they they have Sean's behind yeah. the wheel there. So he's got a lot of experience uh, driving JLs. <laughs> this one is nuts. Oh, it's so expensive. <laughs> that's what that's what he was thinking. Oh my god, this is so expensive <laughs> for a Jeep, especially. Well, and like Sean, I know at least has a big enough audience and or following and or business card to be like, if he rolls one, mm-hmm. he's not cut off forever. If I roll one, like I'm never right, getting right, another Jeep yeah. press car ever again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of yeah. surprised the airbags Patrick, yeah. didn't, didn't go off when you yeah, like, like I, I don't know what the sensor is, like what the sensor, the sensor. is when you tip it, but like, um, is there a yaw rate there? Yeah. Would that be yaw? <laughs> I was going to say probably, uh, probably different in a Jeep considering how sideways it could potentially get mm-hmm. just in, in life, you know? Yeah, that's. That's one of my, my no, favorite stories yeah. is driving a, an 04 TJ at a Camp Jeep event in Charlottesville and driving on the side of a mountain and just being like, isn't this too steep? Like, shouldn't we be <laughs> sliding down the hill? Like, nope. This is just, a normal. Just a line of 15 Jeeps going right by the mountain, sideways mostly. Oh, no. My, my, very, first, my very first press car was a Kia Sorento and I backed it into a Jersey Barrier. <laughs> What is a what is so, a Jersey not barrier? Not quite as bad. I uh, think K rails. Uh, uh, concrete. Yeah, like two, like three feet high. You know, um, oh. but yeah, it went like green, green, yellow, and before it went to red, I, I heard the crunch, and uh, the person oh. who picked it up was like, "Ah, oh, don't worry, we 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 did that in our we've done that in our own you know press loaner garage." So, but yeah, getting getting a, a ninety thousand dollar Jeep that sideways would would probably pucker some things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I actually, uh, about, gosh, maybe eight or nine years ago when I used to work for uh, cars.com and pickuptrucks.com, we did a four by four shootout with four wheeler mag. So we had Pullman there. We had a guy named John Kappa there. Um, and we were testing a Nissan Xterra and it was at the uh, Chelsea Proving Grounds. And I remember we did some articulation where we're going back and forth, back and forth like that. And we actually blew every single curtain airbag in it. Even oh, just no. going like five or no, 10 no. miles an hour, just back and forth, back and forth like that. But that was enough for it to like shoot off all the airbags. So yeah, I would imagine in a Jeep, like, and I don't know, maybe it's like, if, but no, yeah, he would have been doing it in four low at that speed, but. It's, it's like uh, every uh, Raptor I've seen jump and then land. 
like immediately <laughs> curtain to bags deploy like everything like just <laughs> like every one of the silly hillbilly mm-hmm. not not to stereotype hillbillies but <laughs> right. they, they definitely like to hillbillies don't have that many air yeah hillbillies don't have that many airbags <laughs> exactly well not anymore <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man i am messing up my social links tonight <laughs> all right so sweet so that was 392 wrangler about to fall on its side <laughs> when he when he shared that this week he shared just the still image i hadn't seen the video yet and i was like mm. i wasn't sure but it, like it immediately made me think of andrew collins's injury because like that's what andrew was doing in his side by side when it caught oh the no wheel on a rut and rolled except he yeah. was going i think to the right and his left hand went out and that's what was crushed mm. by the roll cage was his hand Ouch. going out so nope. luckily sean didn't have any windows open in the wrangler um yeah, we're gonna try and get Sean back onto the show. I kind of want to see if I can get a copy of that picture like blown up. I need I I'm in my new office and I have an open spot right here to like hang up a picture and I'm like, oh, that'd be a good photo. <laughs> I'm sure he would definitely download it. Mm-hmm. Um, Laura Willow would definitely get you some images. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that 392 in that Wrangler is nuts. I have not driven that yet. That I'm getting crazy. the plug-in. I'm getting the plug-in hybrid in a couple of weeks, which I'm excited for. But I just can't even fathom driving a wrangler with that much power well like it's ridiculous because you you had one in the city like yeah it would i i literally would scare people with it like it would um the my 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 favorite story was we were coming back from somewhere and there's a, a button that it's the two exhaust pipes and for the life of me i looked at it a couple times and didn't even i don't even sure what i thought it was but we were turning into my neighborhood and I pressed it and it's the active exhaust and it gets oh. 10 times louder. And my wife rolled her eyes and all the kids were like, that's cool. And mm-hmm. we literally came through our neighborhood and I kept like gearing it down and it would <laughs> burble and pop and it was so loud. And it was, you know, and she she's like hiding under the dashboard. Um, <laughs> but it, it, I, I, I would literally get into it and press that button every single time because it was going through tunnels and you know uh i think i posted an instagram or twitter or both video of going through a tunnel at sort of max acceleration and it is otherworldly it was be driving beside you know srt or hellcat you know challengers or chargers and things and and just you know give it some gas and they would go like what the hell (laughs) which how did i miss this conversation with you and zaren doing top gun gifts because I'm trying to find your Jeep video. <laughs> oh, it was, uh, yeah, if it's uh, Instagram, it might be easier because because Twitter, it's going to be. Uh, he joked that he wanted to see the entire Top Gun uh, through gifts, and I said, "All right, stand by." <laughs> and uh, being a being a big fan, I did my I did my best uh, approximation, um, one gift at a time. Danger zone. <laughs> I can't. I can't do the audio. It won't help the listener. But this is the video. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. No, it's the the tunnel coming out of DC on sixty six, and uh, it That's was crazy, incredibly loud. Yeah. Do you I, know what, I mean, what kind of mileage did you get driving around DC? Um, do I want to know? I think you no, know, like teens. You know. Oh, um, that's not bad. I love teens. Okay. Yeah, I mean my 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 JK Big Bear got like high teens usually like mm-hmm. uh the jl i had recently was was low 20s but it was the four-cylinder two-door mm-hmm. um but that one was i don't know 12 13 somewhere around there oh um, man so it, we yeah just, we got we my uh my my what do we just ahead. nickname it the obliterator of mud puddles like yeah i mean yeah it was um we went out to george washington national forest which is like i don't know an hour and a half outside of dc and uh, my wife is taken to sort of hopping out of the car and, and doing, you know, some kind of, you know, photography type stuff. And so she she gets close enough that I think I'm going to splash her and I usually don't. <laughs> and I think like I'm going to get in trouble. I'll get in trouble if I do, mm-hmm. but she swears I won't. Um, but it, every time we saw a mud puddle, I was like, all right, let's just. And just on the other side, there would just be no more mud, and, you know, no more water in the puddle. It would just spoosh, water gone. <laughs> William, that's an amazing photo. Funny, of, like going through that puddle. The funniest, even... the funniest thing though is that 
I joked that it was it was you know it was the king of the jeeps and all other jeeps should kneel before it. And every time <laughs> I went by a jeep, occasionally you get people that were like, "Hey, what's that?" But it was almost a little too subtle. Like it mm-hmm. it was almost like it it had it's got a couple badges and a big quad exhaust, but that's and a uh, bigger hood. But like visually, like I didn't get you know, I didn't get a bunch of like you know jeep men. On this trail, I've been through there a bunch of times. Uh, trail Trek Tour was one of the um, uh, off-road events that I did a couple of times with with those guys. And every third vehicle, second vehicle is a Jeep. We went through this day, and I, I think I saw one other Jeep, maybe. Oh, really? So when you want to have that, like, bow before me, bow before me, I am your king moment, you know, on the off-road trails, there was nobody out that day. It was funny. <laughs> yeah, you were really putting the... Uh the hood scoop that's supposed to divert the water away from the air intake to work like that much water in the air above the hood. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, do, exactly. Do you know yeah. why they didn't go with SRT badging? Like why they didn't make it an SRT? No, I mean, it's, it's got the 392, but it doesn't have any SRT, I guess maybe no, I guess for precedence for the, the grand Cherokee. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. I, I feel like it, it was, if anything, it was too, it was too subtle. I felt like it, it mm-hmm. looked like a, a little bit more butch Rubicon and like the average, the average person would, would notice it all. The mm-hmm. average Jeep owner might notice, mm-hmm. maybe not. Like I actually, I actually thought it was a little too, for the price, I kind of wanted like gun turrets or some sort of like <laughs> off the wall, like for that, I mean, for that price, it is, you want something you kind of want to like that's about as ex- extensive as the as the badges get just the mm-hmm. just the the 392 a couple places and the big exhaust and the hood and other than that i did like the uh the power top that was mm-hmm. that was pretty cool when you isn't, just press a button and the whole thing just kind of goes all the way back robbie isn't srt dead i thought no. stellantis dissolved that division and divided those engineers out to other product teams Oh man. Um, well, I know they're definitely not dead. Mm, that's possible. Um, I not, not like actually dead, but like okay. I, okay. I was gonna say dead. yeah, because they're they're still selling <laughs> SRT. They're still selling SL, SRT products. In fact, they are. They, they are. Yeah. They but just I remember that headline though. Yeah, I don't they, think like, they're put developing their engineers... new products though. It's gonna be interesting because you know they're gonna need to. Um, one thing we were talking about at like Auto Pacific was like you know are they gonna start electrifying like the Charger and the Challenger and like the the head of uh, Tim, I can't remember his name, but like they're talking about that's coming. And I would imagine they're going to tap into like SRT for that. Um, but I know like SRT products themselves are doing well. In fact, I think they just like extended the production run of the uh, Durango Hellcat. Right. Or whatever, the, whatever the top Durango one is called. Um, yeah. I'm still waiting on the Pacific. You said, S- you said SRT, SRT FOR. I had a good Dodge Neon flashback there for a second. <laughs> SRT four. <laughs> so uh February twenty twenty one it was announced that uh Stellantis disbanded the SRT engineering team. Hmm. And that's so yeah, maybe maybe they're just like doing motor trend. Yeah, well, that's probably legitimate. I mean, I remember hearing that somewhat. I I would imagine that like they're gonna just on like a temporary pause and working on some stuff. I mean, I'm super excited to see like electrification hit some of these cars and SUVs. Like, I just think that the the performance potential is just like so available and like mm-hmm. ready to just get tapped into. And this this is where I just play like, in, I, like I dabble with industry news, right? Like I never mm-hmm. actually, I know nothing. But mm-hmm. like Wagoneer, Grand Wagoneer seemed like a perfect opportunity to do an alternative powertrain into mm-hmm. an iconic the average vehicle. buyer is going to want is good to, yeah the average buyer is more likely to want some sort of a plug-in or electric option exactly i mean especially I'm not trying to transition you but looking at the uh the hummer and the and the lightning you know um i read the notes um but you know that's <laughs> obviously if you got if you've got ford and gm looking at it you know well it just feels like a missed opportunity, I guess, just because uh, you're you're right. Like the GMC Hummer's been announced, but like that actual production run and release is very far in the future. And maybe they had this engineered mm-hmm. and ready to go, and they didn't mm-hmm. want to wait. They just wanted to get the models out there, and they'll pivot to an alternative drivetrain in the future with like the 4xe 
the hybrid assist. The all yeah, I was going to say the Porridge is a good is a good uh, sort of preview potentially. And, and I Robbie, think you said you have that you've got that coming, right? Yeah, I'm getting the Wrangler 4XE in. I think I don't know, maybe three weeks or so. But back to the Grand Wagoneer. So when I saw the concept in person um, back in October, it was actually like. I, I really don't think it was like actually like a PHEV setup, but like it was essentially shown as a plug-in hybrid. Like it had the charge port door that would like, you know, open up and close. Like, yeah, so they're definitely going to do a plug-in hybrid version of it at some point, I think. Okay. Um, but I think they need to like get it rolled out first. And because I, I don't think it's on sale quite yet. Well, no, it's still not. On I sale. think it's like right up. It's like right how, on the cup of coming. Totally so. How can anything be on sale? There's nothing like we... My wife and I are joking, driving to our kids' There's little league nothing games. Nothing to buy, yeah. Because the Ford dealer had, I think we counted eight cars, and they're mm-hmm. always full. Lincoln had at least 17 to 20. Mm-hmm. But, like, they're parking Jeez. vehicles parallel to the yeah. street to make yeah. it appear like there is more stuff on the lot than what's there. Because mm-hmm. behind it's just open space. <laughs> no. There's a uh, giant uh, General Motors dealership that sells like Chevy, Buick, GMC, um, about 20 minutes north of me. And usually they probably have, honestly, probably close to 100 cars on their lot at a time. And I drove past there today on my way to Road America, and they had probably no more than 20. And yeah, they're doing the thing where they're, they're parked at angles mm-hmm. and they're spaced yeah. apart. And it's all the visual thing. But then like once you like pull off and drive through the lot, you're That's like, wild. man, this place is a ghost town. There's nothing here. So my... My favorite part of this is like texting, had, um, texting Robbie, like, I don't know, two months ago. Hey, should we be discussing this? And it's, <laughs> it's only gotten worse. Like it is, it is only getting worse. And I think it's, oh, it's, it's, it's supposed to last for a while too. I, I, I would mm-hmm. imagine that Q3 is still going to be rough. I think Q4 will finally start to see like a little bit of an uptick, but um even some mm-hmm. of these automakers that have been like otherwise like immune from like the microchip shortage, like they're already starting to announce plans yep. to just like temporarily pause things or uh, vehicles are getting delayed because they don't have the chips for them. Like I know the. Well, yeah, I was going to say uh, there was a local Mercedes dealer when we were mm-hmm. shopping recently um, who said they had some triple digit number sitting in Baltimore at the port and wow. he didn't know whether it was a, a chip issue or like, cause they had, some automakers talked about shipping and then putting the chips in after post shipping. Mm-hmm, right. uh, he said that they've got they've got cars that are 2021s that are sitting there that they may not get until 2022. And then the Genesis dealer told me that they're just not getting cars because their chips they were so behind the chips. Wow. Especially the uh, it was GV or whatever the SUV. Um, yeah. No, we can't. We can, you know, he's like, we don't have many, and when they come in, they're sold pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so he said theirs was straight up chip issue that they just they weren't getting them at all which which Yikes. manufacturers are least affected so far that's what i haven't been able to tell like because everything's think, starting to look empty to me honestly i've driven past two toyota dealerships and they're packed to the gills with new cars see my local one was completely I, small, empty. Yeah, I have a small toyota dealer near me and it's hard because they keep their inventory at like lots nearby mm-hmm. um but their main lot seems about as full as it normally is huh and i think nissan is i'm just thinking of the nissan dealership five minutes up the road for me um they seem like they're pretty well stocked but i also know that um they just came out and announced that plans for their aria which is their all electric crossover that i think looks fantastic um we're we were supposed to get that like later this year but now they're pushing it actually to next year instead because they don't have the microchips Mm. for it so but you really think it looks good? Oh, I think it looks fantastic. Yeah, I think it and looks it's like a Volkswagen ID4, which I saw today on the road for the very first <laughs> time, and it looks really, really good. The ID4, I think, is definitely a lot like softer than that. The Aria definitely looks like a little bit more like butchier, but um, I mean, I think they're both it's great. Good. I think it's Nissan like a is, Yeah, it does look. It does look like a lot Murano, and I'm not sure I that's think, a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> But I think I think they've they've got a lot of good coming out with Aria, so I think it's going to be a good new direction for them. So like Aria, ID four, mm-hmm. what what else exists in that space right now? The the Rivians are coming; they're not here yet, though. And I think they're also delayed a tiny 
bit yeah. if i remember reading correctly which is a bummer but you Maki know you is also like that's the same kind of like five seater mm-hmm. maki is i think actually selling fairly well from what i remember looking at for I, so. I am almost certain yeah. i saw a mike levine tweet touting the fact that <laughs> my Maki's are doing very well it was, um, it was, I, yeah, yeah, it was I, 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 above, yeah, I just was you say it was good. promoted above the tweet saying Broncos aren't going to be here for a long time. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a, a couple of soft asks to some board dealers when we were car shopping mm-hmm. about the Maki because I really just couldn't decide what I wanted to get. And uh, they had very little in stock, but they had a bunch sort of like, you know, on order, you know. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then every time I see one, admittedly, as a Mustang guy, I stop and go, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do like that? I do, yeah. Okay. I, I, If it wasn't called the Mustang, I don't think anyone would be... I think, I mean, all press is good press in this sense. Like, people mm-hmm. talked about it because it's called a Mustang. I think if they called it something else, I don't mm-hmm. think people would talk about it as much. But it is a... Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll have one in July, I think. Um, nice. A Maki premium. Um but I think more people talked about it because it's a Mustang and I don't think it was a bad marketing move, but as a six or seven time Mustang owner, admittedly at first I was like, Oh, screw this, you know? But then the more I see it, the more I'm like, maybe it's just, I'm getting into like, you know, middle age manhood. I'm like, Oh, that's practical. <laughs> it's, it's practical, comfortable. Doesn't make a lot of noise. I mean, doesn't yeah, shake me quick. Like, yeah. I, my wife's my wife's goal is to have the most quiet car possible. So, she I think she she loves the idea of an electric car. But you know, mine is is continues to be uh, you know I, I like I like I like the noise. <laughs> it's it's funny you said that she wants the most quietest car possible. I was like that's that was my interest in a Mercedes uh, diesel Sprinter. That was the mm-hmm. quietest thing I've ever. Oh, no, nice. Yeah, you could sleep nice. in that thing. It's just like. <laughs> or, and, and it has the feature, first of all, I could put the kids way to the back. Like I, they can oh, go yeah. all the way to the back. But it yeah. had the lame, I, I don't call it lame, cheesy. It's, I'm sure it's useful, but like mm-hmm. once you get to a light, you mash the brake pedal and hold comes up on the dash and you can take your foot off the brake. Oh, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I loved it. Oh, really? I get oh, so I nervous it about that. Then I got, Robbie, I got to relax at a stop. That's what relaxing happens in my life. It's like eight seconds Very little. a day. If I can add, if I can double it to 16 seconds, it's huge. And then when I press the accelerator, there wasn't a thunk. There wasn't a thud. There wasn't a, the van mm-hmm. just started to go. And I loved it. I, uh, I, I hate most start stop features. Like it, if I, the more, the less I notice it, the more I like it, the more I notice it, the more I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, screw this. Yeah. Right. Like I don't, I don't want the engine to turn off. Like, and that diesel is damped really well in that van, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you don't really know that the engine is on. So like, it wasn't start stop. That was just brake hold essentially. Yes, it was. Just I do like a good, hold. I, I'm good with the. I'm good with a good brake hold. Yeah. Yeah, it was I think awesome. that's a good feature, but the especially worst in heck. start stop. Yeah. <laughs> but the worst with the brake hold is: Have you have any of you driven a new Mazda where it has like mm-hmm. the auto parking brake when you put it in drive? I don't know. Some of them have it like two or three I've been in and I haven't been able to figure out how to, and you can turn it off. But um, as soon as you get in the car, you turn it on, you throw it in drive, even with your seatbelt on, um, it, the parking brake is automatically like engaged and it doesn't turn off right away. So if you like give it just the tiniest bit of gas, the car like hunches up and then goes. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. And it's like Mazda's are so good, but it's like this one thing. It's like, oh, I just want to rip yeah. it out of the car and throw it away. It's like, that, I, I have. <laughs> we went to uh, Florida over the long weekend because mm-hmm. my wife hadn't seen her family in a way too long due to the pandemic. So we're mm-hmm. both vaccinated. It's been way past the two weeks, all the kids wore masks. And so I spent a weekend in a Chrysler Pacifica, a rental one at that. So like, <laughs> I understand it's not like top tier, but like super functional, except for in the Florida heat, I never need the engine to turn off in traffic. <laughs> I want no. that AC compressor running mm-hmm. on yep. the whole time. I don't care. We just, yeah. We just did Hilton Head in a uh, press loaner Sienna uh, Platinum Hybrid, mm-hmm. and every time it cut off and it's hot, you know, I was oh. like, no, 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 like, no, 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 because like, the AC kind of goes, mm, yeah. no, 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 yeah. stop, stop. Yeah. Yeah. Was that the, was that the mean, brand new Sienna? Yeah. yeah, but like DC to Hilton Head, like it would, I mean, it would do, 
80, 85 easy and just held it. It's, it, it, you know, considering, considering what it is, it, it did almost everything we needed it to. What color? And was then it? some, uh, like a silver. Uh, wasn't it, it had green? Like, it had, no, it was a really uninteresting color and it had like really like chromey kind of wheels. I was, it was kind of blingy. I was like, I was a little embarrassed with that. My wife was same thing with the, with the Wrangler being loud, her, she's a very anti minivan person. So she was kind of like, you know, hat down, sunglasses on, like, no, I hope nobody sees me in this, but it was, I mean, perfect for what we needed. Mm -hmm. That That's hilarious that she's anti minivan. Cause that is also my wife's take when we're here, oh, hates but it. as uh, soon hates as we're it. on vacation, she's like, fuck the minivan. Like, just, right. Minivan, minivan life, yeah. Minivans are the best. I, so someone local to me best. has purchased one of the green ones this this brand new let's it's what is it it's not quite forest green that's but it, interesting. I that's a good looking color. image because there's all yeah. the reflection there um no that's cool though but it's 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 actually i'm like as it drives by i'm like you know what that looks really good yeah 52 well, grand I, I i paused so i was like Ooh, that's expensive for a minivan Oof. however like when you start looking at like all the like features and things it was it's pretty solid 52 well, grand like I've had to start uh, recalibrating how I look at vehicle expenditures. Well, I remember when uh, uh, Doug DeMuro did the first, like, you know, 50 grand minivan a few years ago. It was like, they did, it was for a while, none of them is becoming the minivan podcast. Uh, nobody <laughs> wanted to break the break the 50 grand barrier. And like, it was like 49, 995, you know. Um, but now they're, you know, maybe it's inflation, but there are, there's a bunch of them over 50 grand. Now, like, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, speaking I wish it was a more interesting color. Spe when speaking of the Sienna, like I think Toyota deserves some credit for like breaking into this new white space that hasn't really been tapped into yet. It's these, <laughs> I think you know what you're gonna, you know what I'm gonna say. Oh, exactly. It's these, it's these, it's these off-road kind of like nature-oriented minivans. Like they came out with that Sienna Woodland, uh, Woodland mm -hmm. edition. Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, standard all-wheel drive, hybrid power, and you get like. About half an inch ground clearance. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look that special. I kind of wish they would have, like, you know, put some of the bronze wheels on it from that uh, Highlander that just debuted, that special edition Highlander. But oh my I gosh, mean, who did I that think, on Twitter, Robbie? Do you remember? Well, I posted that. I think it would be, you know, if they took those bronze wheels from that, like, whatever that special edition is called, and like put it on this on the Sienna Woodland edition. I think that would give it just a little bit more of like an aggressive, like, was it? Was it in, uh, in, adventure edition or whatever it wasn't the it's whatever their it's not like their midnight edition but it had like a mid-century modern kind of like themed interior <laughs> going on who, um, somebody did that for you though on twitter did somebody they? did and I'm, I'm i'm blanking on who did and i feel bad because it was such a good like mock-up of it because i was a part of the thread and i was like yes <laughs> and now i can't find it i will find it <laughs> But this this Woodland Edition, I mean, I think it's great. I mean, if you want something that is going to, I mean, it, obviously this is not going to go like on deep back roads and stuff like in the mud and whatnot. But like if you need something to like get to a trailhead or like, mm -hmm. like a small pop up camper, you know, it's got a standard roof rack with like crossbars on it. I mean, I think it's a cool area that like more manufacturers that are like that have a minivan like in the game i think they should like explore it a little bit i mean like why not i don't know what the sales numbers are going to be for it, but i think it's it's worth applauding toyota for like kind of stepping into that area to do that i think they'll sell all of them probably i hope it, so it can't be that much of a it doesn't appear to be that much of a like a they're not strapping a bunch of hardware to it it's like mm -hmm. a couple of yeah. weeks like get it out the door it's like some, mm -hmm. like some extra accessories yeah mm -hmm. just lift it up a tiny bit but i don't know throw some like you know, some like Yokohama Geolander tires on that thing and just call it a day. I think that'd be awesome. Is it not come with a little bit more aggressive tire? Oh, I don't I think it, it does. I found the image. But they lift, they lift, they lift it up like I think 0.6 of an inch. So you've had a little bit more ground clearance. Yes. Thank you, Kyle Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> he did such a killer job photoshopping. That's such a good Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah, green cars with bronze wheels rock. Mm -hmm. No, that's yeah, that's 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 a win-win. <laughs> oh. And then you have also a C and a TRD, right? Oh, I wish. <laughs> well, that that was our that was our other <laughs> render. Uh, that was oh yeah, that'd be cool. It's like, I like that they put it in Moab too. You know, I don't right. know who I don't know who this this Matthew Longton is, but he is a genius 
when it comes to photoshopping things. Is he? Yeah. Oh, some of his stuff he does before looks like it came straight out of like a automotive like manufacturers like like press launch or something. Yeah, nice. he's got a real gift for him for like just doing these crazy mock-ups that we all just like dream about crazily. Say, so, Matthew, I'm going to apologize right now for not clicking onto your profile because I don't know <laughs> what's in the rest of your profile and I don't really want to have to edit the show. He's either, he's so. worth a follow. Matthew Longton is his <laughs> name. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to go back to my show notes. I feel like I wandered so far off topic. I love that Evan, Evan the immediately was like, needs more wing. And he was like, I actually considered that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I definitely passed uh, 350Z yesterday with the largest wing I've ever seen. Like super structure up above, massive across. And then like wow. he'd accelerate in traffic and the whole thing would shake. And I was like, what's that going to do at speed? <laughs> There's an STI in my neighborhood that has a big wing and on the bottom of it, so you can see it from like down below, it says, caught you hating. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yes, you did. That's <laughs> hilarious. Oh. Yep. I thought, I thought big wings were just there for uh, dinner. Isn't that what the big wings for? You sit that's there, what and that's do. where you get you a couple of noodles. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, just get a, I've got get a, a eat off it. I've yeah. got a Veloster and this week, and it is as good as everyone said. Such a good car. So much fun. It's a it's not a, it's not a manual, but it's still a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's bar none probably one of the most fun cars you can buy on the road today. And yeah, it's there's very few cars that compare to how well that how, how well that thing drives. It's just such a I like, little yeah, there it is. Yeah, I I like the Focus RS a little more, mm -hmm. a little bit, not mm -hmm. a lot more, but a little more. But you can't buy that anymore. So. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that is, a, that's, that is a fun little car. Yeah. Look at that, look at that little wing on the back. Practical hatchback. Right? Yeah. It's the... It's I, uh, the... I, took a, I took a picture of my... Uh, I took a picture of my red solo cup sitting on the wing last night while we were playing <laughs> cornhole in the front yard. <laughs> nice. I just rested my, rested my drink up on the wing. <laughs> oh. It's the, it's the um, minivan hot hatch uh, podcast this week. Yeah, yeah but, um, we've deviated all four by fours. I mean, I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> we, we, we have gone down some crazy rabbit holes lately of just like part part of it is like I'm I'm stuck right now due to little league. Like three kids in little league. We as much as I want to camp, like it's mm -hmm. a, and we for two and a half weeks. And this ended about a week ago. Kansas City decided to do its impersonation of Seattle, where literally every day there was some form of precipitation, whether it was just a sprinkle, whether it was torrential thunderstorms. Oh no. And, and so, like, you'd be like, that all sucks. right, we're going to play tonight. We're playing at six. It's sunny out. It's sunny out. It's sunny out. 4 30 hits. It's just enough sprinkle. And the league was like, nope, there's puddles oh. on the fields. We can't play tonight. So, like, yeah, like it's just like it keeps extending the schedule. So now, like we finish up, we, we normally finish up around second week of July, and it looks like it's going to be around second week of July again. Like, but like we can't get loose. Like it's the only open weekend was Memorial Day, and we went and saw family. Mm -hmm. So like, oh okay, I have I have a hankering for camping. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know that I told you guys that we bought a suburban. Yes. Okay, so I have nice. a nice year. Yeah. So it's a 2017. It has 22 inch okay. wheels with low profile Michelins. Nice. All right. <laughs> That's a good. I mean, at least it's a, so we we had a 2012 Yukon XL, and I threw two rods <laughs> dramatically in dram dramatic fashion through the engine. That's uh, right. And there was a class action lawsuit up th up through 2014. So anytime I hear someone who has one of those. And I hear it's 2014 or newer. I'm like, yes, all right, that's 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 good. Oh my god! Now, GM now is I remember like, oh, having this that is discussion a, with Wade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 no. Yeah. yeah so every so, time yeah. the engine shakes, I, gotta, I think of Wade. I cringe. I cringe a little bit when I think of that car because it 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 shuddered all the way back. I was trying to head back towards the GMC dealer, and uh, it just kept shaking and shaking, and I would have to like restart it and floor the engine just to get enough gas in there to move it a little bit. Oh my god! Eventually, just got it off the road and it made some amazing noises and at the the mechanic showed me a couple days later he's like you can see here and here where the rods tried to escape from the engine and it was oh my God. Wow. yeah that was yeah that's messy yeah that's funny that you say it like that because like 
I, I feel like every one of those like classic car shows I go to and they always run the engine with nothing in it and they take bets on like how long it'll run kind of thing. Like those yeah. things I, I feel like are always just kind of go <clears throat> and they, they just stop. There's no like noise. There's no bangs. There's nothing. Oh, this was that sounds yeah. spectacular. It was, an, it, was, it was a spectacular <laughs> failure. At least if it's going to fail, it failed with like crazy noises and like, oh my God. And I was at the bottom of a hill in the dark and the car is cutting out and I was just, I just need to get up to the top of the other hill and just park it. And yeah. <laughs> so nice. you had tremor also. I had tremor. Yeah. Tremor was one of the biggest vehicles that wasn't a, some sort of rental U-Haul type vehicle I've ever driven. Mm -hmm. They are was, massive. Yeah, that's was, a big boy. That's a big I had boy people, shark. I had, yeah. I had people uh, actually was in DC taking pictures as I did. <laughs> I did some kind of like, you know, off-road pictures, but then, I drove it through the middle of DC in the middle of the day and just took pictures. And uh, I actually had like a work truck stop me and it was like, what is that? Because like, <laughs> it, uh, it had manufacturer plates. And uh, and so I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's an actual package. And he was like, I didn't know if you just put the stickers on it. And I was like, no, no, it's, that's a real, <laughs> I think it was huge. Yeah. But it's got a kids winch, loved right? it. Uh, no, I didn't. That one didn't? I think yeah, I got the power yeah, wagons. Just, power wagons got a winch on it. I thought I thought Trimmer had the ability to check a box and you got a winch, but uh, it's possible. But I, just, I mean, you guys know some of the press loaners; they check every box. So yeah. if it was on there, you know, just um, my the funniest thing was though um, the um, the steps that come down from the tailgate. If you extend them while it's in in uh, while it's while the tailgate's up, it sort of looks like a. Uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> my, my, my seven-year-old uh he was he was playing around the bed and he extended it and dropped it out i was like so it looks like a gt3 911 or something with the oh you know the, my that's God. A big that pops up yeah he kept popping it up i saw a uh i saw a, i don't know a boxster or panamera or something the other day it was one of the ones that just sort of pops up a little bit and it looks yeah. really out of place when it's up and that was exactly what I thought about. I pointed to it and was like, hey, it looks like the F-150 we had the other day. <laughs> that is hilarious. I had no idea you could actually shut that with that, uh, what is yeah. it, the, the man step, quote unquote? Well, the man step yeah, is what Chevy it, called it. No, no. Is that what Chevy called it? Okay, well, whatever the, the power step, super power step yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But that's It comes that's in handy. Yeah. I, literally the first day I had, it, I had a neighbor come by who we're friends with, and she's like, hey, I just bought a a table and chairs on Craigslist. Any chance you could like help, help me go me get out. it? I was like, yeah, no problem. I was like, yeah, I need I need to take some pictures of it with like crap in the bed anyway. So I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Dude, that that's that, hilarious. That step was was super helpful. I mean, mm -hmm. it was the heaviest table I've ever picked up. I wasn't sure if we were going to actually carry it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man. So uh, we had Jeff on recently, and one of the bits we were going to do is go and and instead of reading rugged radio comments that he has on his YouTube channel, we were going to read the comments from his tremor video. Oh boy. Oh, they God. are rough. Never read. Yeah. Never read, never read the, never comments. Read the comments. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jeff's oh, it's terrible. Uh, it's terrible. Jeff's whole aspect is like, yes, it's a massive truck. And for someone in America, it makes a lot of sense for them. But for he himself, it didn't make any sense at all. No. And he had, mm -hmm. he had, he had very valid points. Mm-hmm there's a lot of people running around in this country with bigger trucks than they actually need yeah they're uh they're hauling oh, no question. but this is america so we drive for yes. bigger stuff than, than we need oh. yeah yeah and having driven across this country and, and driven around europe and stuff it's shocking how much bigger this country feels sometimes like my uh mm -hmm. my seven-year-old was like what's it like driving across country and i was like long like to go mm -hmm. across country in a reasonable amount of time not talking like cannonball but like it's a it's double digits per day just to get to the next place you want to get to it's like how far is that oh it's 10 hours christ okay let's go yeah, like you yeah know, whereas uh it's, we spent a month driving around europe and it would be like okay so austria to italy or whatever okay it's five hours or whatever like you know okay you know <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. um yeah yeah that's that was a trip um we took in the, the jk last year and my two older kids eventually got a little annoyed because every day was like 10 hours like because you yeah. can't it's just you know in order to get anywhere it's just it takes so long we're we're headed to anyway whitefish. big big country yeah we're headed to whitefish this summer and like i'm already halfway across the country right you think it should be short for me mm -hmm. it's yeah. two full days wow oh yeah like it's 22 hours like we are 
Yep. We're, we're gonna the first day we're gonna push for twelve. So the second day is only ten. <laughs> Both of those are gonna suck. Yeah, are you gonna go? Are you are you gonna go straight up north and then west, or where are you? Uh, out? So I think the way actually the way out and the way back might be almost identical, but with like some cutoff. Mm -hmm. um, we are gonna do. I think both times out at South Dakota. Like, oh, so okay, nice. That's, that's ninety, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it's like thirty-five to twenty-nine, up to ninety and over. So well, you sure said something happens. earlier. I thought was funny. Was I thought of that trip that you just put up there was because that was in Moab, and a lot of the a lot of the trip we had was on like just sort of loose, like you know trails and things where anything with you know normal crossover or ground clearance would do fine so right. if you had a minivan with like kind of butch tires and like a slightly little more It'd be lift, fine. Like, done. yeah like it was we didn't i mean that was you know that we didn't do like big moab trails we just we just tried to get to the campsite we had in moab which was like off the beaten path up mm -hmm. by a mountain and it was actually a it was suspended by a um was suspended up in a tree they had like a tent for us and everything which is cool but like we didn't know really awesome. special we saw normal crossovers and things drive up in there fine like that's why i think there's a there is a neat market for that mm -hmm. you know? so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna i'm gonna pivot to robbie's photos now oh <laughs> man speaking of comfy off-roaders oh that is uh <laughs> I will say that that is actually not me driving. That is uh, Larry Villacette from Automotive News, who was a blast to hang out with on that press trip. Um, but yeah, so that is the Outback Wilderness. I know you guys have talked about it a couple times on the show. I'll just touch on it really quick. Uh, Subaru did a fantastic job with it. They really didn't need to do much to the Outback, which is in itself a great vehicle to begin with, to, mm -hmm. to make it even better off-road. Um, you know, you get the extra ground clearance, you get those Yokohama tires that are great. And they're actually really not loud on pavement, which is nice because some AT tires. I'm huge. fully like mm -hmm. between the Yokohamas <laughs> and the Falcon Wild Peak ATs, mm -hmm. not the MTs, but the ATs. Mm -hmm. Like I think once I finally buy 18 inch wheels for the Suburban, mm -hmm. which is going to be very far in the future because I've got 70,000 miles of Michelins to go. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. I think I, I don't think I'm going as extreme. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think I need a KO2. I I love the Toyos that are on the Sequoia when we were in the mud, but like I I think I just need a regular. I just want something that has more of a reinforced sidewall and don't need mm -hmm. the aggressive tread. Yeah, and these these Geolanders are perfect for that. I mean, with the uh, Outback Wilderness is like the the X mode, like all wheel drive system, like they recalibrated it. So you get a lot more wheel spin. Yeah. That photo is a lot steeper than it actually looks. I mean, it we did things with, steep. <laughs> we did, we did things with the Subaru Outback that I didn't even imagine were possible to do. Um, and I know I'm like a little bit of a Subi fanboy, but like, you know, Subaru, they killed it with this thing. I mean, I think it's going to sell really well. I think that your your people that want just like a little bit of extra like you know momentum to like get out into like the deeper back country are going to buy it you know people that are like doing severe you know like overlanding this is not really the vehicle for them but these are people like you know if you do want to go farther out into like the back country to go find a crag to go climbing at or you know if you do want to do some like snowshoeing like in the in the backwoods or something and you just need that extra ground clearance and you need a, a more of a sturdy roof rack to like put like a roof tent on i mean this is perfect yeah you got all the skid plates. plates underneath it you can actually get all um all sorts of skid plates and underbody protection for it's really not even that expensive i think it's like six or seven hundred dollars for like the entire thing underneath to be oh wow protected. from the factory mm -hmm. um that's cool yeah, then the the front trail camera is is awesome i mm. mean we're, there were there were times when we, we were at holly oaks off-road park in michigan um, and there are times where we would be going up super, super steep hills or like cresting like banks and you just like tap that button and it would stay on for a little bit. And you could just like, literally like you look down at the camera to navigate around. And, um, I was very, very shocked at how good this thing was off road. Um, hmm. no hesitation at all climbing really steep hills. You know, you could just spin the wheels and it would just get you up there. Um, the downhill, uh, I guess you could almost, almost call it like a downhill, like crawl assist, like we're going down and it like slowly controls the vehicle. That works really well. Control. Descent control. There we go. Um, mm -hmm. 
and the last thing I'll say about the Outback Wilderness is like they really listened to their super really listened to their target audience like people you know like me who like to mountain bike or like go skiing or want something that like you know I don't need a full-blown pickup truck or like a Jeep Jeep Wrangler or something like I just need something like a little bit of a soft off-roader with extra capability um Mm -hmm. you know they put like these like bright dome lights on the trunk when you open it up so if you want to like set up your campsite at night or yeah that uh, was Jeff commented on those too yeah, and the the one thing that I think kind of got overlooked in some of the other reviews I read of uh, the uh, wilderness version was like they specifically put the headliner on the inside of this car to be black, and the reason being is this so that when you're like loading a mountain bike or loading camping gear, if you scuff the roof, you're not going to see it. And right. like you can look at the roof of my my Sabaru, and there's all sorts of marks from my mountain bike or like camping gear and stuff, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, they did a great job. And what's what's fantastic is is it's, you can drive it totally, totally fine just on the road as an everyday driver on pavement, you know, whether around town or like on the highway because it's super, super comfortable. Ross made the comment a couple weeks ago. He was like, hey, so, you know, like at the trailhead where you see all those Outbacks and mm-hmm. cross tracks, like you're just going to see a different variant of Outback there now as well. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. Do you know, is it, is it a turbo four or did they go with a bigger V6? No. So it's still the turbocharged four cylinder. Okay. Um, and they just re they did like a little bit of tuning of the gearing so that you have like a lot more like torque available, like at lower RPMs. Um, I actually think it drives a lot better, like torque, but like just the, the, the overall feel and like the availability of the torque, it comes out a lot smoother and easier compared to like the other turbocharged and like, uh, turbocharged outback i think like the onyx like xt has it or whatever the xt trim is um but like around town it's not as like lurchy and like laggy like the torque really comes on a lot smoother which helps you when you're trying to like go off-roading so i guess my it's kind of a lame weird question no, my mom has sorry. my mom has an ascent mm-hmm. okay so it's the same 2.4 turbo four cylinder mm-hmm. her ascent okay to me like mom car like it's it's a mm-hmm. I, I i jokingly refer to it as her station wagon like and the mm-hmm. more and more i look at an ascent <laughs> i think they're just all it's a big station wagon, wagon. Like yeah. it's literally, <laughs> like, there's nothing about the body lines of an ascent that makes me go that's an suv or right, a crossover right. even like it's a freaking station wagon just happens to be slightly higher off the ground um but don't i yeah i don't need to tell her that but like when they first got it the accelerator pedal like you would tap it and the thing would jump mm-hmm. forward. And that was like my dad's only complaint about it. Because first of all, he was <laughs> riding in the passenger seat while mom was driving. And so like every time he was blaming her, like mm-hmm. Carmen, stop putting your foot down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he finally drove it and was like, oh no, it's the car. It's not her. Like it was like an on off mm-hmm. switch mm-hmm. as opposed to like a gradual acceleration. Yeah, it's and and I think with the Outback Wilderness is like the, the the gearing and tuning that they did to it, like it's it's way smoother. Like I had a uh, an an Outback about a year ago. I can't remember exactly which trim it was. It was one of the higher up ones with the turbo in it. Um, and yeah, it did it did definitely feel like a little bit of like jumpy a little bit. But with this Wilderness, it's it's so much smoother. I I really want to buy one. <laughs> I hope I can buy one at some point because it's 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 everything I need in a view. Well, it's it's attainable for you. Yeah, it's not expensive. It's it's actually cheaper, I believe, than like whatever the top trim is. I think the top trim is like the Touring or the Touring XT, whatever the Touring I, XT sounds like. Yeah, yeah, I'm blanking on their trim ladder, but it's positioned like slightly below it. I mean, you can get it, uh, it out the door. Thirty eight. Yeah, you can get it, and there's no real options you really put on it. So I mean, you get it out the door for like thirty eight, thirty nine, whatever destination is. Um, I mean, it's a hell of a lot of vehicle for a little under forty grand holy crap like Mm -hmm. like comparative vehicles are rav4 trd Mm off-road like that's way up there and that's only Mm -hmm. 37 and a cherokee trailhawks 37 like Mm -hmm. thirty-eight thousand dollars for that seems incredibly cheap actually yeah and i think that and again i have not driven both of those uh trim versions of the rav4 or the cherokee but i would say that the Subaru, it, the Outback Wilderness is definitely a lot more capable than that, that than that Rav Four, um, TRD mm-hmm. off road. But I, I've it would driven, be f- I've driven both of those. The mm-hmm. the Cherokee's shockingly capable. Mm-hmm. Uh, the TRD is just a lip, you know, Rav Four essentially with yeah. some 
underbody cladding. Yeah, so I'd yeah. be curious to see how the Cherokee like uh, Trailhawk would do up against the Subaru. That'd be an interesting. I mean, I know they're not 100 percent like the exact same size and segment per se, but that would be an interesting combination. Mm-hmm. And we need more wagons. Mm-hmm. Even yeah, though it's as more. I'm mm-hmm. yeah, making fun of the ascent <laughs> for being a wagon. I'm like we need more wagons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all my suburban is. I treat it as a family wagon. Like it's mm-hmm. not. And the Outback is definitely over the past couple of years, like it's definitely like more so a crossover now. But I mean, to me, in my mind, it's always a wagon. I mean, it looks like a wagon. It has the, the, the practicality of a wagon. It drives oh, like a wagon. No it's, it's 100% a wagon. <clears throat> I had another, another pivot and I forgot it now. Man, don't you hate when your brain does that? I had I a great so segue hard. lined up to go to the next thing and now I can't. Oh, attainable versus unattainable. Let's talk about your unobtainium. <laughs> The Land Cruiser that I've yes. Right, so yeah, I've got a 20, 2021 Toyota Land Cruiser Heritage Edition, and I've put four hundred miles on it in the five days I've had it now. Um, highway trips around town. Um, I've done a tiny, 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 tiny bit of off-roading with it. Um, I have decided that it is the greatest vehicle ever made, and everybody should go buy one, especially this year because <laughs> not going to have it after this year. Um, it's okay. It's it's fantastic in every way. This is coming from a guy who owned a 1994 Land Cruiser, and I have not. And I guess I had an 05 LX too for a bit, but mm-hmm. I've never been like ridden in a 200 series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so good. I love it. It's literally my only complaint, and this is such a, a first world problem complaint on this like 90,000, however thousand. I couldn't find the Monroney for it, but I think the heritage starts at like 85 or 90. Yeah, it's like um, 90, 90 grand of Land Cruiser, no mm-hmm. matter what. Um, but the the only, literally the only gripe I have about the vehicle is that there are no physical buttons or knobs for the fan speed. So when you put on the air conditioning or the heater, you have to do it through the touchscreen, the up and down part. But, just, just press auto mm-hmm. and leave it alone. Oh, I hate automatic climate control. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm a, I'm in I'm in the minority. I feel like a lot of people like praise it, but no, the, the Land Cruiser. I I think you're actually the majority. I think the minority is people who actually hit auto and don't touch it. William, what do you do? <laughs> I usually do auto. However, in the in the Veloster this week, I mm-hmm. feel like whether it's on 65 or 75, the fan is like max. And so I have been kind of like playing around with the fan button. Uh, same in my M4. I feel like it's no matter what it's on, the fan's so loud that I have mm-hmm. to like actually move the button around. <laughs> Dude, that's actually that's funny. I feel like that's a an auto writer Twitter thing too, where we all always discuss that, and most people yeah. hate the auto feature mm-hmm. because of what exactly what William just des- described of like it's never it's never going to turn down the fan. Yeah, it's perfect. like you're, you're you're trying yeah. to have a conversation and you tap auto climate control, and it's like mm-hmm. oh yeah, so my day was <laughs> it's just like mm-hmm. which okay describing a feature that I didn't realize that I bought until my brother-in-law bought a new gm product and then described the feature to me and then I, while i was using the Supreme, I went, oh i guess it does that too oh on no no it's it's actually a good feature okay. uh you get in the car it's hot mm-hmm. I call the wife as you do to say hey i'm headed home and as it connects the call the car turns yes. down the fan speed huh and then, so you can have your conversation. And as soon as I hang up the call, the fan speed comes right back up. What car was that? It's a 2017 Chevy Suburban. My brother-in-law uh, has I... a, oh God, I don't know the year, but he's got a Sierra 2500 HD. Mm-hmm. And his also does that. As soon as he connects the call, the fan speed slows down. Mm-hmm. Have the conversation. Hit yes, hang up, I was, fan speed I was just right about up. to point out. Yeah, we just got my wife a 2018 GLS um, mercedes and um it was something she pointed out yesterday she's like did you know that the fans drop when the call connects through like carplay or whatever it's like yeah. i didn't but that's really cool <laughs> yeah. gosh that's I not paid attention enough to, yeah. to notice that <laughs> I, I jumped generations of vehicle when we went all the way to a 2017 like before mm-hmm. that the newest thing we'd ever had was a 2013 <laughs> <laughs> but no i love the language yeah we it's replaced her fantastic yeah, we okay. replaced her 2012 GL with a 2018 GLS, so it was shocking how much better some of the elements of it were. <laughs> Do you like the uh, M Bucks, the multimedia system? Uh, that's all right. Um, 
it's not a it's not a touch screen which mm -hmm. is always bugs me so like um i have so many press cars that when it's not a touch screen and i have to use the dial in some way i'm kind of like eh. like i, I want to have the option to just reach out and poke the screen you know but right mazda and some others you know lexus oh, yeah. that's just not an option here yeah. yeah i i've playing with more touchscreen stuff and then i could do android auto instead and i was like oh I'll just just leave it in the android auto. Mm -hmm, I don't need all this mm -hmm. other crap. like but hearing the way the chevy will read a text message versus the way that google will read the text message in two different female voices definitely threw me off the other day <laughs> like, there, there, there are extra women in the car how did this happen like, i don't need any of that guys I have plenty. Okay. two different voices were talking to me robbie you also had defender too didn't you oh yeah that was a long Ooh. time ago uh Sorry. yeah i had the defender 110 back in january um God, that was a long that's, time ago. That's like 17 years ago. Yeah, I was going to say, what year is it? In terms oh, of the way yeah. pandemic speed COVID has time. Worked, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Exactly. But the Defender was fantastic. I uh, took it uh, winter backpacking, actually. I went up to a state park way in northern Wisconsin and uh, spent a quick cool. winter backpacking overnight. And the Defender, I don't know if I had, uh, what, Land Cruisers, like 85, 90, Defender, fully Defender's loaded. Right you could it, get up it? there with Maybe it. Maybe a little yeah. looper? Up easily starts you know at 80 what? i think doesn't it? that'd be that would be so hard because i again i also completely fell in love with the defender i think that there it's so hard these days and like you know you two can probably attest to this but it's so hard these days to like get in a new car and feel somewhat of kind of like an emotional attachment to it um it's, that it's special yeah yeah and like the veloster i yeah. feel like you can definitely connect with um and mm -hmm. the i felt really like attached to like the defender and then also this like land cruiser it's like oh i just love this thing it fits me really yeah. well you feel like it's got character um yeah that would be a tough tough oh, pick between oh, land cruiser or defender but the toyota obviously i doubt i'm the for... first person on the podcast that i doubt i'm the first person on the podcast to do this but i have to use the restroom i'll be right back no, no, you're, not, right. you're not the first you're good man <laughs> sorry that's what, I, that's what i thought happened when you dropped I'll take like, the it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you went out and came back mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so all right, we talked to Zach Clapman last week mm -hmm. or two weeks ago, however, for, for the show, it'll feel like last week. Um, he took a F-150 power boost. William's been replaced by a dog. That's amazing. Oh, my God. It's like a doodle, too. <laughs> woof. Woof, 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 woof. Sorry, audio listeners. William's dog just walked <laughs> into the camera and said, oh, William. <laughs> That's a very cute dog, if you, if you can't see him. Okay, so with F-150 Lightning releasing and mm -hmm. part of what – my wife heard in the sales pitch was, oh, if the power's out, you can plug in the truck and you can run the house. Yeah, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool feature. And I no. I think, and it's legitimate, like it's 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 an actual thing. It's not like just like a talking point, but- Right, um, but that that's F-150 Lightning though, right? Yes, that's F-150 Lightning, the, the full electric one that's coming so out. So Zach also mentioned that the F-150 Power Boost Hybrid can do the same function. I know it has the onboard, uh, whatever it is, the, the pro power generator, right. which is super cool. Um, so you can use the pro power generator to power the house. Yes. So on um, the F-150 Lightning, there's, there's an extent at which that power runs out. But I think with the F-150 Lightning, I think you can power like a house. I'd have to look at the numbers, but right. I, I didn't, honestly, I did not know you could power the power like a house with the the f-150 hybrid the power boost like i didn't right. know that was like a, so, I know I, I, it had the generator i didn't know people like were using it to power the houses but right. um that, i know zach, with the f1 well, zach mentioned no no because I, th I think you'd be super on board with this too zach mentioned that with the the power boost generator mm -hmm. running the engine at full load it could run for two days he said 48 hours at full like max load kind of thing for the generator and that's what the F-150 Lightning, I think, I think it said like on low power, like demand, like, you know, like if you have just a couple lights on in your house or like your refrigerator, like, right. I think an F-150 Lightning can power your house for like about the same time, if not more. In fact, you know what, I've got the, I've got the press release up right now. I'm just going right. to look it up. So the, Zach's second comment was at light load. So full load was two days at light load. He said 80 I think 85 hours 
That's crazy. So wow. like if all I'm burning is the furnace and a, in the refrigerator, like, so it made me think of the super harsh winter we had last year where I'm in Kansas city. I'm in the Midwest. We are prepped for harsh winter here, but even we had rolling blackouts mm -hmm. through the middle of that polar vortex. Mm -hmm. Now it never actually hit us at this house here, <laughs> but we had a, not a, a lot of neighboring or neighboring neighbors. That sounds terrible of neighborhoods near us <laughs> where they suffered through sometimes it was only it sometimes it was like five hours like the power would be off so this is this is from the the press release i'm looking at it right now so um with the extended range battery which they haven't announced the exact size of that battery yet but that's the one that gets you like 300 miles per charge okay um if you use 30 kilowatts your 30 kilowatt hours a day um, the uh, F-150 Lightning with that bigger battery pack can power full power a house for up to three days or up to 10 days if the power is rationed. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah. So That's I don't know wild. exactly what the, the power is rationed. If it's like, you know, like leave your AC on for an hour, turn it off and then like kick it yeah. back on at night or something like that. That's but exa I think that's, exactly that's pretty impressive. So mm -hmm. Now that makes me think maybe I do want the full EV. Because mm -hmm. with because with Zach's example, he was like, "You just got to go fill up with gas again, man, and then you're good to go." Like they didn't mm -hmm. run out of gas. Like I don't know how Texas handled it. Like if they actually had gas stations closed, mm -hmm. because everything was so cold. But like our gas stations are open all winter. Like it's going to be really interesting to see with these EVs coming out. Like what other EVs kind of offer the same thing. Like Rivian with their R1S and R110, they're going to have that onboard generator too, where you can like charge things at the campsite or they're also doing like vehicle to vehicle charging um i don't does the gmc hummer ev have an onboard generator i can't not, remember not if i've that seen I've that or seen not yet it yeah. needs one because that's going to be a big i think right. like selling point for some of these like ev pickup trucks and suvs well did i so, see that the extended range lightning was um commercial only or was that a errant headline Oh, I don't know. I thought it. I thought the yeah, bigger that battery popped pack up, would be more popped up last week. Yeah, I know that up last can... week that the extended. So the <laughs> I found a headline for Hummer, the 2024 GMC Hummer is hmm. going to offer an onboard electric generator like function called Power Station and be able to draw three kilowatts of power from the vehicle's battery. Hmm. Three, Three kilowatts, kilowatts doesn't sound like much. Or yeah, because like I'm, and I don't know if that's, yeah, I don't know, because like this F-150 Lightning, well, it, it's like an average of 30. This is a nice article. Thank you, Nick at GM Authority. Who, hey, it's Nick. I just realized it's Nick Saparito. Maybe I need to come <laughs> on. Uh, so I'm going to trust these numbers then because I know the guy who wrote the website. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he has uh, on here that Pro Power Onboard will only run two or 2.4 kilowatts but the hybrid model has an optional 7.2 kilowatt generator. Okay, so that would make sense a little bit more than. Yeah, the 7.2 is okay. the one that gets yeah. you the four 120 volt outlets and the one 240 volt. Mm -hmm. And that's out of the hybrid. Yeah, and I'm, William, I'm, I'm curious about that, uh, that thing you read, because like I, I, I'm pretty sure Ford is giving both that 230 mile battery pack and that 300 for, for, uh, it was the uh, it was the extended range pro, so maybe not all extended range, but the mm -hmm. extended range pro is what I'm finding here was for commercial customers only. Huh. So I don't know what the pro gets you over just a regular old extended range. Yeah, it's a very ambiguous article. Yeah, the 300 mile extended range pro is for commercial customers only. I don't, I'm not sure how. I got a bunch of headlines, but I'm not sure how confirmed those are. So the one I got again, I don't know how uh, this article. I definitely am not going to trust. Like I trusted Nick's. It says the extended range coming in forty nine nine seventy four, forty nine thousand. It offers you the same range as the ninety thousand dollar platinum, and they're like, "What's up, forty nine thousand dollars?" Like that's the whole point of their argu our article is like, you can get the extended range in a much cheaper truck. Oh, I'm gonna have to do some research. That's pretty uh 
but you know i did the math on the on the 300 mile range like she wouldn't have to she wouldn't have to plug it in for like 15 days her her commute's like seven miles like it's and and honestly like i was i was truthfully like pretty skeptical about the f-150 lightning um i'm still like a little on the fence about like electric pickup trucks but um i think with the range the styling it doesn't look as like stupidly ridiculous as like the tesla Cybertruck does um it's not real it's it's, yeah it's not real um (laughs) you know you've got ford's dealership network there you know you've got all these like good incentives like with the f-150 um lightning like i think they're giving people like two or three years of free charging or something like that i I Um, thought i saw something like that yeah i think honestly and with that price i think ford's got it in the bag i think they're gonna sell Mm -hmm. really really well and i think that's gonna i think the f-150 lightning is really gonna help bring more awareness to like electric vehicles and then more people are going to go buy the Maki e and some of these other like electric cars mm-hmm. and ford's got coming down the pipeline so, too here, here's my favorite thing with uh electric pickup trucks right mm-hmm. so you see the pricing for gmc's you see the pricing for rivian you see the pricing for fords mm-hmm. and you see the quote price for the the cyber truck right i don't even know what it is what is it oh man oh. I, ain't I, mean, I, I it's they're not it's gonna <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're gonna make it. I, it I, was that like thing 80. Is so stupid. Oh god. I think it was like eighty grand <laughs> because they were quoting the Rivians being like ninety, Fords being ninety, GMC being hundred, whatever, and then the mm-hmm. Cybertruck was like thirty. I was like, that's not. <laughs> right. uh, man, I'm going through my own mentions to try to get back to this thing, um, and it's gonna take me forever, so I'm gonna give up on it. But it was a guy who clearly was a Tesla fanboy. Mm-hmm. trying to point out the fact that the Cybertruck seemed to be the cheapest of the four. And my only reaction to that statement is three of those vehicles have more than one test vehicle that has already been built. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's only one example of a Cybertruck. Yeah. And there's, there's no way. I, I mean, I'll, I'll say it right now. And if I, if I end up being wrong, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll owe somebody a pack of beer or something, but like, there's no way the Cybertruck is going to sell for that for thirty thousand dollars. There's no way that truck is going to sell for under fifty thousand dollars. I don't even think no it's going to look like it looks. No, it's not. I mean, there's 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 just <laughs> no way that the, techno- not. <laughs> the technology for 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 batteries is not going to be that cheap in all the the stuff the Cybertruck is promising. Right. Like you look at the numbers, you look at the powertrain numbers, you look at the the specs for the towing and stuff. There's no way they'll be able to make the technology that cheaper to sell it for like 40 30 grand like no yeah because like i've heard people say like, like solid state batteries like it's gonna be batteries of the future to get them to the numbers that they are uh, yeah and we're still we're still probably a decade away from solid state batteries right you know it's just yeah i've, I've seen people online or on twitter be like oh yeah the cyber truck it's gonna cost twice as less as the f-150 lightning and i'm just like no it's not it physically is not <laughs> possible it's like Ugh. You know what's a better electric truck we should talk about is the canoe. Oh, the canoe. But is th- it's adorable and it looks I, great and it looks fun. I want to like the canoe. I think they're too late. Oh, you think so? I I think Rivian will beat them to market. I think we already have an electric F150 like I uh, like once i i shouldn't say i think rivian i and and i've said this many times on the show like i have no investment in rivian but like oh my god i like it i love the idea of it it was the first one to me that actually made the most sense for an ev other than a small car it was like hey it's a truck and it's an suv awesome they're they're going to succeed no doubt i have no i have no hesitation or doubt with rivian they're gonna they're gonna absolutely succeed the only the other thing that makes me concerned is the Lincoln deal falling through? Mm-hmm. Like I know Ford, Ford is still a major investor. They have tons of investment dollars in Rivian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the fact that the Lincoln deal fell through kind of worried me a little bit because Rivian that was going to develop an EV platform for Lincoln. Yes, but just because they're, from what I understand, like yeah, they're not going to have like a, a a Lincoln badge product on top of a Rivian chassis and everything. Um, from what I understand, their partnership is still in existence. Like they're still going to be working together on, you know, Ford has uh, 
an explorer electric coming there's going to be probably an escape and an expedition light electric coming down the pipeline same with navigator and aviator um and I, you know i can almost guarantee you they're going to tap into rivian for some of the technology you know it might not use that platform per se so like rivian's like platform but they're going to definitely collaborate together on some that that lessens my concerns then because i mm -hmm. i think ford's knowledge of how to ramp up production is going to be invaluable to Rivian mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I still, I still don't think Tesla's work, but they don't always work well for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. bumpers fall off due to rain. The roof rain flies off. The, the roof flies off. Eh? Yeah. Rain runs into the trunk. Like they're, the car starts on fire and you can't get out of it because the door handles don't work. Like it's, it's just not a good car. Like I hate to say it. Like it's just, it's dangerous. I, I I had a discussion recently with someone I didn't expect to be Tesla Stan. Is that a thing? I'm, I'm showing my age right now. Um, so like that. And someone who was just like, nope, he's got the market beat. They're all going to do this. And I was like, listen, I understand that he's been investing in things that weren't, or that are outside the automobile world. I understand that. I don't appreciate being grouped into their beta test. They're not testing their own vehicles. Their customers are testing their vehicles and the rest of us are just bystanders in the tests. Right, right. I think, I, I like the idea of electric vehicles. I would buy a Tesla. I don't know that I'd ever use that system in a Tesla. Mm -hmm. I never want the vehicle to drive for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will probably die before I think I see that system exist that I would then rely on fully. <laughs> That you would mm -hmm. trust it, yeah. Yeah, like I, I think that's like as as long as a human still has to be there to intercede, not fully trusting the system. Like it's mm -hmm. got to be one hundred percent foolproof, right? Well, yeah, I used only, to commute. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was gonna I say I used to commute like a uh, commute an hour, an hour and a half each way, and I was mm -hmm. begging for this for those systems to advance. And now I I, I move closer in, and it's I don't drive anywhere now because I work at home. But like you know. <laughs> Yeah, my my new commute was like eight minutes, and I suddenly find myself like not caring whether whether this advance. It's going to be the people that are driving longer distances every day that are going to be the the ones who really mm -hmm. want this to work. And post COVID and telework and things, I think you're going to see less of a you know desire to have that. So yeah, sure, mm -hmm. like a long distance cross country trip or a vacation or something. Absolutely, but like. But like you were just saying, like if I have to sit there and pay attention, I might as well drive because at least it gives me something to do. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, a really and, good point. And like the radar adaptive cruise, cruise control. Oh my god, the radar adaptive cruise control <laughs> that we have now is so much better than what it was that's, in 2012, mm -hmm. and the way that that system problem solves. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I and I'm, I'm sure I've told the story on the podcast before, but like we had a 2021 Expedition Max last spring so as lockdown mm -hmm. was occurring we were headed to colorado for our spring break trip only to turn around and drive home mm -hmm. the same day mm -hmm. um because we were like oh everything's shutting down in winter park yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, i guess we're going home and then it was uh do you stop in haze or do you keep driving all the way home to kansas city because like we don't know how contagious it was all yet so like we we can mm -hmm. remember like mm -hmm. that that cruise control system and those driver alert functions in the Expedition Max did a great job of helping me navigate that vehicle safely. Mm -hmm. And I could have somebody pass me and then pull out pretty close behind them because I'd run up on the back of a semi and the system didn't freak out. Mm -hmm. It could all, it was already doing the math on like, nope, that gap's opening. We can be calm. We don't have to freak out. Like, mm -hmm. and that gap would continue to open, but then I'd pass the other vehicle. And I, appreciated how much more math and software they had done on radar cruise control because the first time i had it in an explorer if you pulled out behind somebody it'd slam on the brake so that hard terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the gap didn't exist and even in the suburban we have now every now and then like i'll pull out and it'll give me the little crash warning mm -hmm. but it won't like take control mm -hmm. i'm like mm -hmm. no no come on we're good guys like we're good Boards. i'm just basically admitting to how bad a driver i am i think is <laughs> <laughs> well Ford, ford's ford's copilot uh i think it's like copilot 360, 360 is a pretty good 8s system i mean suite of 8s tech i mean like with the lane keeping assist and the 
the adaptive cruise control like that's definitely probably one of the better ones on the market mm -hmm. i drove from here to new orleans in a golf r and uh between the lane keeping assist and the radar cruise control mm -hmm. i it definitely knew if you didn't touch the steering wheel but i probably could have gotten <laughs> away with not touching the steering wheel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. quite for you know quite some time especially Long, on like longer 90, than you should have 95 you know where it doesn't really change much you know like you hit you know you, you move over and hit the signal and it would speed mm -hmm. up and pass people and it would adjust the wheel enough um to where you know it would stay on a highway for quite some time without a lot of you know interference so or, you weren't really ping-ponging in the lane no it would stay it did a, it did a better job of some of them at a yukon xl loaner that i felt like it would overcorrect a little bit and it would kick me back towards the other side and then overcorrect that way and then red light would pop on it was just like all right you do it asshole it was just like <laughs> you know <laughs> the truck was um, throwing up its hands yeah it's like fine I it's like um, i can't do it you do it yeah you heard the driver at least um, it admitted it to it <laughs> yeah it's like all right we're done <laughs> i would say that uh kind of like what you were saying like how like some of the overcorrecting is like way it's like a little too intense and whatnot um mm. jaguar land rovers lane keeping assist or lane departure like warning like that to me is like that it i love the defender it's excellent but like i remember when i was driving three or four hours north on the highway it's like you know, I kind of would play, yeah, it was like Pong. It was like, I'd like to I'd mm -hmm. play the game where I'd like, all right, all right, is it going to kick in? Is it going to kick in? And then it finally engages really late and it's just, just like, it's like, yep. oh, like, you know, mm -hmm. I just kept that off the entire time. But, and I think, I think the uh, Hummer EV SUV, just tying it back to SUVs and off-roading, I think that's going to have GM's Super Cruise, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Interesting. Um, which I have not driven. I have not driven a vehicle with Super Cruise. I mean, yeah, either. Mm -hmm. I well, and Ford has their own version called Blue Cruise. That's on right. Mm -hmm. That's on the F one hundred and fifty Lightning. Yeah, on the I think that's like the Mach E's going to have it too. Yeah, but, but Ford also came out and like they understood that. Like, I, I, sometimes I feel like we're like a Ford fanboy podcast because literally, like, I'm I I work in marketing, so like their marketing team has done such a great job of laying things out for us over the last two years of like, mm -hmm. dude, they slow dripped Bronco release so well. <laughs> so well. That's all we <laughs> talked about for like four months. Mm -hmm. And now all we're talking about is the fact that you can't get one for a while. But that's mm -hmm. not the, that's not the marketing team's fault. Like that's the entire mm -hmm. auto industry relying on one factory. Boy, are people pissed off that the Bronco is delayed. Well, it's mm -hmm. Oh, man. I think yeah. Camille has one pre-ordered yes he does he yeah, he's, yeah he's yeah, yeah. he's been not yeah he, he, he <laughs> sorry a, buddy <laughs> an angry face yeah like yeah that. he's been yeah he's been tweeting about that, that pretty often <laughs> felt bad for him yeah having one of the people that i've met in real life i uh we kind of have a joking back and forth rivalry so i was kind of like oh sorry <laughs> 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 too bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> the hummer looks really big on the inside but it, it mm -hmm. is really big right like it's a big yeah it's massive uh, nine thousand what do we do we do we care about the crab walk or what do you, what do you guys think i i think it's interesting but like i think rivian i i, I like rivian's tank turn better oh yeah, really mm -hmm. cool <laughs> yeah. yeah the tank yeah. turn's pretty sweet <laughs> spin really on your cool. own yeah. access yes please yeah but i did we that can, in a, we yeah, can I, go sideways off the mountain wait no yeah i did that in a focus rs but it was more of a just you know hold the wheel to one side <laughs> and floor <Yeah>. it <laughs> <laughs> was the, didn't top gear have that for a while they had like a a london taxi where that they had swapped the bottom body onto like a subaru or something that would just sit there and oh, access so cool. turns right or yeah. access donuts the the crab yeah, walk just... seems pretty cool but there's a i think in one of the press press launch press launch videos like for the hummer ev like there's a video of like it actually like going through an obstacle course sideways with the crab walk and i think if I you can show that, yeah like, yeah. <laughs> yeah show me yeah show me Show me what I can do with it that, that matters, you know. Like they showed it like merging out into the highway on that like spy photo the other day, and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, like so, <laughs> so like <laughs> what does you know what does that do that a regular car couldn't do? I think yeah, showing it in like practical applications, mm -hmm. you know, will make it a little less gimmicky, maybe. All of my search results were our YouTube videos, and I need mm -hmm. I can't I can't do YouTube and YouTube. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, there we go. Press room. Please be the right one. Nope, don't need the volume. We're on an ocean. Nope. Again, I had one that had an obstacle, William, and now it's. Oh, nice. They're like, no, hold on. You're on the beach and there are no obstacles. Let's show how we walk around stuff. <laughs> Like that's not how I do like how they call it crab walk. I think that's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very descriptive. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this one's this it's better than cool. something like super testosterone y, like super walk or something like that. Cyclone mm -hmm. walk. Yeah. Let's see if right, it does it. Right. I don't okay. I don't know how he's getting out of here, so we'll just kind of oh. Yeah, look at that. Look at oh. that. Isn't that cool? Like, <laughs> like, that's like, crazy. Hey, there's your jersey barriers, Robbie. There's they're right there for you. Yeah, it's a jersey barrier. Yeah, You're yeah. learning. <laughs> So that like it makes sense to me, mm -hmm. and yeah. if it's an off-road <laughs> obstacle, okay. But like yeah. the video that they're how many, of how many scenarios? Story. Yeah, how many scenarios are you gonna have exactly like that? So it's like, oh, I'm stuck here. Oh, it's okay. I have crab log. I'm just gonna they, use it to show off if I ever drive one. Oh, no slipped, question. They slipped a sprinter van into the back of their uh, video there. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna <laughs> crab walk all over. Yeah, if they ever. Yeah, the first time I drive one, yeah, I would just. Crab walk into parking go to, spots go to, and go to Target and just set up an obstacle course and be like, watch this. Right. <laughs> it would give Target Dad something to look at. So mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I love that neither of you hesitated on that reference. You're like, yes, we know. No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah. laughs> the poor I'm bastards totally in the parking lot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you know everyone's in committed relationships. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sweet guys. Say gone a while mm -hmm. we didn't talk about lexus j201 it's a lexus lx that has a magnuson supercharger on it which is bonkers and yeah. it looks like a vehicle that you would find in halo or some <laughs> other terrifying robbie like, do you know who put space? that together i do not who put it together the uh the team over at expedition overland no kidding. Yes. We actually wow. had Rochelle on and talked about it with Rochelle. <laughs> well, well, we amazing. had Rochelle and Clay. But because it's how gonna... I know Robbie doesn't listen to the podcast. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I listen. I will admit I'm like four episodes behind. I, I need to catch up. I'm, Dude, you're yeah. so good. I just like, I wanted to. I literally wanted that That's joke funny. and that joke alone. I'm sorry. Hey, it's <laughs> okay. It's, 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 it's well deserved. I am far behind on my podcast game. I actually have like my Apple podcast things like queued up, and it's like I just need to like See, hit play and just. I, I assumed you listened to it during uh, recovery from your knee, and so that would it could have been uh, drug altered. <laughs> so you probably listen to the episode you just don't remember that you listen to it possibly i take a lot of painkillers <laughs> exactly <laughs> knee, knee surgery will do that to people mm -hmm. but yeah that 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 uh j201 concept is pretty cool and it's going to debut at this year's uh rebel rally which is the one where they have like a, a female driver and a female navigator and yep. I, it's a super super cool, cool thing that goes on and mm -hmm. um, definitely yeah. excited to watch it this year we we had emmy hall on two weeks ago nice she's cool yeah she's like but we it was the first time we had emmy but we didn't have her navigator normally we have emmy and rebecca together when we have mm -hmm. her and her her stories are still hilarious but she was it, it's such a cool event yeah like well i i i'm super excited i love i love tuning into it whenever that happens well, like just they're going back it. with the rivian oh nice so they're they're going back with the rivian because she just did a uh, Nora Mexican 1000 with a Volkswagen ID4 mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. David Faust. That's an impressive cool. feat. Who, who yeah, got that cool. Volkswagen up to like 107 miles an hour on the desert lake beds? Just watching <laughs> its range, just like. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they, <laughs> yeah. She said that they uh, were able to keep it charged because on the transit stages, the ID4 wouldn't drive the transit stages. They throw it into an enclosed trailer with a generator to power it <laughs> on the transits because it didn't count all right because nor i mean the nora is not score like it's not full out race it's more like did you mm -hmm. complete it event as opposed mm -hmm. to like mm -hmm. yeah there there are also vespas that race in the nora mexican 1000 which yikes yeah that's pretty awesome yeah, I think my um, only like parting, I think my only like parting, if we're wrapping it up, I think my yeah. only like, parting word of wisdom is please, if you have the money, go buy a Toyota Land Cruiser. Heritage edition. Yep. 
<laughs> or just a regular one. Or just a regular one. There's just, about to be just, unicorns. Just go buy Land Cruisers. That's my advice. Nice. Well, the 300 series is coming out, but we're not getting it, correct? No, we're – well, we are not getting it, but uh, – something is coming to replace it yeah yes that is confirmed can it be a sequoia uh, max that would be cool I'd get uh, i have a feeling that given how important this like newfound like obsession and like liking of like hardcore like body on frame suvs is like is surging nissan has something coming out you know they're they might bring back the x well they're New they're, they're gonna Nissan is bringing something back. I don't know if it's going to be the Xterra. I think it'll be the Xterra, but they're working on something and they've confirmed to me that they're doing that. Um, and Toyota is definitely like watching the space closely like a hawk. So I don't know if we're going to have another like land cruiser per se. I think it, I think we should. I think the, I mean, the LC 300, like it's been all over Instagram and you can see photos of it, even though it hasn't officially debuted yet. Right. Um, but it should be neat. I mean, if they go to like a twin turbo V6 layout and, you know, make it a little bit more efficient, a little bit more modern, but keep that like rugged body on frame, like DNA that makes it so excellent. Um, it'll be a hit. We just won't get it. But I am optimistic that whatever we do get, that is for sure going to replace the Land Cruiser is going to be just as cool as the current one. That'll be awesome. Mm -hmm. So go buy your Land Cruisers. I'm not buying anything for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> One car payment's enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sequoia's paid off. We're gonna, we got a number of years to go. In the spring. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are yeah, we are driving this in Montana this summer, so that'll go well. So um, I'm going to go through and do all the normal plugs. You can rate and review oh. us on iTunes. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. We do post the video, which, William, your dog made an appearance. Oh, good. When you, nice. when you took your break, the dog took your seat. It was kind of awesome. Oh, did he? I'm yeah. not surprised. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's adorable. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's Dublin. Dublin. That's a great dog name. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, I always like dog names that are um, related to people names because I like going to the dog park and hearing some lady go, Kevin, get over here. <laughs> <laughs> when you're at the regular park, you're like, wow, that's a parent who is aggravated. Mm -hmm. But if you're at the right. dog park, you're like, that's goofy. Like, Steve, get over here. Exactly. <laughs> Tanya, let's go. Like, okay. Um, so you can follow William. It's at William Bird with a Y USA on everything. Yep. See? Yep. And then everything. Yep. Uh, at Robbie underscore to graph two Fs. Just Twitter and Instagram. Uh, yeah, I rejoined Instagram a couple months ago. And <laughs> uh, I'll also say if you're interested in anything like automotive industry related, you can follow us at Auto Pacific yes. on Twitter. There's good stuff between uh crap who's your editor ed ed kim yeah yes i like following or at, he's at ed kim ap that's yeah. ed's uh he's he's a solid twitter follow just because his industry stuff every now and then i'm like i learned something today and he's a massive car geek you should have him on the show sometime <laughs> uh, i'll send a direct message or you can hook me up with an email that's all right uh we're booking july <laughs> <laughs> i still have a couple of uh misses that i gotta try and get back that were recent mm -hmm. Um, they were pretty huge so need to need to try those so uh mm -hmm. the show the universe on twitter the real universe on instagram and then i think ross announced last week if these shows go out in the correct order that ross is now writing for utv driver and atv writer um and then i've got stuff on car bibles and the drive Woo. hopefully hopefully by the time this comes out something actually posts <laughs> <laughs> i've written a Written like three things, and then all of a sudden, what, 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 yeah, what we discussed earlier, like that happened. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. so I was like, that seems like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you can follow Ross, uh, at no, not like the one from Friends, at no, no, not like the one from, yeah, we gotta, yeah. it's so long, he's never gonna change it. Mm -hmm. And I'm at Overlanding Dad, and this is our show, we're done. Mm -hmm.